are gonna get better now But you're still a drunken fob Yes, how about that? As always, thank you for listening. Ted Bangers and Hooligans on a Saturday morning early. That's always yours truly, Scum Malicious. And I'm getting after it kind of early. I woke up about four in the morning. I know it's kind of crazy. And uh, just how my brain works sometimes. I thought, you know what? I'll make me a mixed drink at four in the morning. I'm kidding. I didn't. I didn't drink alcohol before in the morning. I waited a half an hour. But even last night, I was thinking, I want to get off the hate train, and let's get back to me, you know, because I'm obsessed with myself. What's something I could talk about that's positive? Well, my music, because it makes me feel positive. And then when I'm positive, hopefully it makes you feel positive, right? By the way, weird little... Side note, check my Twitter account today. A guy that plays for Billy Joel, Mike DeGalisi or something like that. I, I apologize if I'm destroying your last name. He liked the podcast that I did about the 10 overrated songs. And Piano Man was on it. Was that a joke or what? And it's nothing against him. I, I appreciate him listening to me. Maybe he laughed. I don't know. Did he play it for Billy Joel? I hope so. Think about that. What if I ended up on like 60 Minutes or CNN Crossfire, Billy Joel sitting on one side and me on the other? Oh, what have you done? Well, I'll tell you what. I definitely haven't done what you, you've you done. Make my fucking uh, friend for life. Not ride on my personal plane. Yeah, go get a bus ticket, motherfucker. Okay, we're not going down that road. I just thought it was interesting. But back to the positivity, right? I want I want to put a smile on your face this morning, all right? And you know what? It is early, but the weather fucking sucks. Go ahead, crack open a beer, or whatever your drink of choice is. Do a couple shots of whiskey. Do some lines of cocaine. Whatever it takes. Let's do this, right? Let's let's have a little fun in the snow and the fucking cold, where our balls are just gonna fall off they're so they're just froze it's just the weather's ridiculous here in Iowa anyway remember all those commercials late at night where they're selling you all the the best of Motown get you eight CDs you know time light books or whatever I think I've mentioned that before see them about two two in the morning you'll wake up and you hear all these songs that you haven't heard in a while summer breeze makes me feel fine you know seals and crofts you know, the essential 70s soft rock collection. 180 songs that take you back to a time when you were making out with that chick in the backseat of your giant Cadillac in the 70s. That kind of shit. At first, I came up with a top 10 most essential songs. It's kind of malicious style, of course. And then it was 20. And then I settled with 25. Right? So, this would be like my commercial if you're going to buy my top 25 essential songs. So, this is what it is. And it's all over the map, okay? You're going to be surprised. I guarantee you the number one song will surprise you. You'll be like, really? Yes, these are in order from number 25 to number one. The importance of the way they affect me. Basically, these 25 songs, if my buddy Jen is listening, or, or Brian, or Trailer Trash, these are the 25 songs I want to play at my funeral. It's a soundtrack to my life. It's kind of malicious style. Let's get into this. Let's do it. We're going to kick it off, number 25. Probably going to surprise you a little bit, but that's what I do. Stuff Leopard Photograph. How about that? Go ahead, snicker. Oh, motherfucker, you make fun of the shit you make fun of? And you, you list that? It is. And let me tell you something about Steve Clark. 
one of the most underrated musicians of all time. Not, it, it's not even close. The dude it was a song writing machine. If you grew up in the 80s, you would understand. So underappreciated. Uh, rest in peace. Dude could come up with a hook. It's that simple. Photograph. I don't want your photograph. He just knew how to how to write a fucking song. He did. Pyromania. Greatest albums of all time. Fuck, I love High and Dry, though. That's my favorite. Which is crazy. I don't even pick a song off my, my favorite album from them. I pick it off the net, you know, my second favorite. That's what I do. I gotta be different, right? But yeah, Photograph. I love it. I don't care what y'all think. Plus, I'm, I'm learning the solo. I've got all the rhythm guitar parts down. Now I'm learning the solo. But the rhythm part's the most important because that's what Steve Clark played. All right, number 24. Strung out, but not the song that you would think I would pick. It's a cover song. Every Breath You Take, That's Right, by The Police. Really, Scumalicious? That's your number 24th essential song of all time, the soundtrack to your life? I grew up in the fucking 80s, man, and I liked that fucking song. And I know I mentioned this before, but a lot of people think it's this neat little love song that Stain wrote from the police. No, it's a song about a stalker, okay? But the way Strung Out does it, he puts that Rob Ramos, very underrated guitarist, like Steve Clark, puts it neat. It's not a real, it's not a shredder solo, but... The lead guitar just goes good. The rhythm guitar. I love Jason Cruz's vocals on it. It's a great song. I don't care. Strung out. Number 24. Every breath you take. Number 23. Oscar. That's right. Yes, that band that I love, that I've talked about at nauseum, that nobody ever fucking listens to, even though I tell them to. I know they only put out two full-length albums. The dude, Devin. That voice, so unique, I don't care if, even if you don't like Oscar and you listen to him, there's no way that you can't hear his voice and say, wow, that dude, he, he was different, it was unique, I like that voice, he's pissed off, he's angry, he's telling people to fuck off, and I loved it, you know, came off Treatment 5 that came out in 1999, which would have made me fucking 28 at the time. Well, sorry, you old as me. It, you know, you forget time. It made me about 43, cause I'm about 68. But, like, that fucking, I just love the anger, the passion. I love the guitar in that. And, of course, I can play it on guitar. I'm not saying I'm an amazing guitarist, but... The songs that I can play, I enjoy playing them. Love playing that song. Yes, Lucky, Oscar number 23. Number 22. It's not always headbangers and hooligans, remember? 38 Special, Hold On Loosely at number 22. Yes, I get it. Oh, that's weird, right? 38 Special at 22. No, not, not a 22. I want a 38 Special. Okay. I'm not even a claim to be a fucking gun expert. But Hold On Loosely is a very, very important song for one thing. Live by those words, especially if you're a dude, younger dude. As you get older, it doesn't apply to you as much. Hold on loosely, but don't let go. Because you, if you clean too tightly, you're going to lose control. Got it? See, you got to act like you like them. Right? You, you got to be interested, but don't be too interested. You got to kind of act like you don't give a fuck. It'll drive her away if you're too involved. And, uh, you haven't texted me for three hours. You know? You want her to text you that. You haven't texted me for three hours. You don't want to be texting her that, because then she'll be like, you know what? You're a fucking controlling fruitcake. But when you don't give a fuck, they 
won't leave you alone. It's crazy. I know. It shouldn't be like that, but that's how it goes. Plus, it's just a great fucking song. And 38 Special has two drummers. Good luck at finding one good drummer. They have two. Playing at the same time. Not kidding. All right. Number 21. I had to get him on here. We're talking Rance and Tim Armstrong. Journey to the end of the East Bay. Off of Out Come the Wolves. Just a great album. I love Let's Go. I love both those albums. They were my top 50 of all time. You remember. Because you're are all loyal listeners. <laughs> I just had to say that, but Tim Armstrong, that voice, there's nothing like it. I don't care if you hate it or not. No one sounds like him. Journey to the end, to the end, to the end. He said this is a Mecca. I said, this ain't no Mecca, man. This place is fucked. I fucking love, I just, I love that album. You know, uh, I like, I love Branson. And Tim Armstrong, he takes giant shits in Fat Mike's mouth. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. All right. Number 20. Going back. Death Angel. Seemingly endless time. That's right. 1990. Fucking thrash metal. This song, I do not understand why it, why people don't love it as much as me. And it was a somewhat popular song, a little bit, not like, you know, a lot of other songs. It's definitely their most notable song that anyone's heard of. But like, I don't know, it's shit. Like Mark, the singer, Asaguita, Asaguita, uh, and Rob Cavastani. Hope I didn't just absolutely trash those names. On guitar, I mean, that fucking guitar, it's the hook, it's heavy, Mark sounds amazing on vocals. It's a seemingly endless time. It's just, I don't know how you cannot love that song. I love it. Death Angel, criminally underrated band. Seriously. All right. Number 19, another little surprise for you. Going with Pat Benatar, Heartbreaker. That's right, fucking Heartbreaker. Neil Geraldo, her husband, who, if you've been listening to me for a while, you know how much of a fan I am of Neil Geraldo. He is a fucking shredder, okay? Simple. It's that, it's that simple. Dude just absolutely dominates the fretboard. Nobody recognizes him for it, at least that I've seen. Not enough, okay? And there's all these guys that play a thousand notes a, a second. You know, fucking just go crazy. How about a guy that writes good songs with his wife and still burns up the fretboard with just amazing guitar work and he is so talented not just on heartbreaker there's so many other songs that he just had fucking just he burns the hair off off your head if you got any hair left up there i do but you know i'm talking about people my age and i'm not ripping on you if you don't have hair let's not get all sensitive but uh, i that ending solo on heartbreaker if that don't give you a boner well then you're a fucking communist. All right, number 18, Murphy's Law, Attack of the Killer Bears. So good. It really is. Um, we're talking Todd Youth, Murphy's Law, Danzig, Glenn Campbell. That guy, remember him? Passed away a few months ago. Uh, so talented. But the guitar riff, that main guitar riff on here, is so fucking good. It just, it doesn't get any better than that. And this is going back to sanitarium days when me and Brian, John, we, you know, we lived in a bachelor pad and there were parties and, and a few females every other night. 
that song, I played it at nauseum. They, they're probably fucking sick of it, but I don't care. To me, you know, I discovered them in Atlanta when I went to school there, Murphy's Law. That song, it's a part of me. And hopefully it becomes a part of you. Number 17. I got a newbie in here. And it's so fucking good that they're number 17. How about that? We're talking for heads down. That band that was Band of the Month in December and Resurgence, Album of the Year for 2018, I know you remember because I was paying attention to all the little, you know, people that checked out the podcast. Much the same. It's a fucking great song. I remember mentioning it, mentioning it, okay, can't pronounce that word, skip it. I remember talking about that song and saying, and I know you remember, that if they're going to play Marin Morris, I'd be rich, la da dee da da dee da I'd be rich. If that fucking song can play on the radio, then much the same should be playing on the radio. It's that good. When we were young and drunk and feeling fine. Oh, I'll drink to that. How about you? If you're not, well, then go get a glass of soda or water or whatever. But you should be drinking a beer to that song. I'm telling you. Fuck catchy as hell. God, we're heads down. From the motherland. You guys keep on representing. All right. You give me hope. That's all I'm saying. Number 16, finally, the first appearance from the band that you know I fucking love. You know, they get me excited. I get warm fuzzies when I listen to them. We're talking pulley. Eyes open wide off their debut album. A steam driven engine. Do I need to say it again? Top album of all time. My top 50. Eyes open wide. It's just like when I first heard it, I was like, God, I can't stop. I bet I hit rewind in the CD player about 10 times. No pills to take all the sheep that I'm counting and I'm still awake. Close my eyes and this time it's for sure. I just, Scott Radinsky's vocals, just amazing. You know, the, the hook in it. It's just a great fucking song, and once again, it's another song from Pulley that no one's ever fucking listened to, but yeah, you motherfuckers listen to this fucking shit from Kesha, is it Keisha, Kesha, and fucking Ariana Grande, and I get it, I'm a product of my fucking generation, you know, I bitched about the people before me, well, you don't like none of my shit, you just like the shit that you like, well, that's, that's how it works, you know, 20 years from now, you kids would be like, who the fuck is this bitch? This bitch ain't got shit on Katy Perry. You're a firework. Come on. Okay, okay. We're, we're not going there. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, Pulley. That whole fucking album. Pick any song you want to, but Eyes Open Wide, when I hear that, it just, I click. I'm like, yes. Play this shit at my funeral. Not to get all you know, grunge on you, get all depressing, God, I wish it was dark and raining outside, uh, number 15, yeah, we're already up to number 15, how about that, rat, round and round, listen, Stephen Piercy is pretty atrocious now, especially live, and it's embarrassing, but that fucking song, I don't care, it takes me back to when me and my cousin, she had the big you know, 45, and we put it on a record player, and I, I hear it, and it just, I, that fucking, and let me tell you something, and guys that are really good at guitar will be like, really? That riff is not as easy as it sounds. Out on the streets, that's where we meet, yeah. and, you know, Stephen Piercy still has kind of a unique voice. Especially in that era, 
you know, the butt rock era. But he really is really hard to listen to at this point in his career. But that song, I don't care. Warren D. Martini and Robin Crosby, fucking rat and roll. You know, it's it's an amazing song. Number 14, I went with Real Big Fish, Everybody's Drunk. Why? Because it's a great song. Everybody's drunk. Booze on your breath always makes girls horny. Hell yeah, I love that line. And it's probably not even my favorite Real Big Fish song. It, it, it really isn't. But I love the song because it reminds me of my buddy and the wolf pack. And all the times that we spent together, because I love them. They're like my third, my second and third family. Hey, Brian's family and then Jenna's family, they've accept, accepted me as one of their own. So I'm connected to all these families. Even if you don't want me, right, or you're sick of me, stuff to accept me. It's like, why do you keep fucking showing up, dude? You're annoying. You fucking, all you do is run your mouth. And then you say, but we still love you. Of course you do. I love you too. Okay? But yeah. Real big fish. Everybody's drunk. Number 14. Number 13. Metallica. One. Yes, the band that I bitch about quite a bit. They made it. Because it's a great song. And I think it's an amazing album. I love Injustice for All. I've talked about that before. And, you know, I'm learning. I'm actually trying to learn the song. Yeah. And... As much as they fucking drive me crazy now, those first four, how many times have I talked about their first four albums? That album, it's so fucking complicated, and you can rip on Lars all you want, and the production of that album, I don't care. That is just um, incredible musicianship throughout that entire album. It is. I don't care. You sit down and write fucking songs like that. Good luck. But one, do you get any more of a dynamic song than that? The guitars, you know, the cleaned and to the heavy, then just totally brutally thrash at the end. Just, it is. And the lyrics, uh, it's an amazing song. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yes, I like a, a Metallica song. A band that I bashed before. All right. Number 12, Nerf Herder, Vivian. Why? Because this was one of the first songs I heard from him. And when I heard it, Perry Grip, he spoke to me. I'm like, I could be in this band. Electronic drums and synthesizers. Killer haircuts and black eyeliner. We'll start a new wave band. You know, somebody that grew up in the 80s, singing about the 80s. How could you not love it? You know, and he played all the same chords that I play. Fucking love, I love her further, obviously. But yeah, Vivian. And number 12. And number 11. Gotta get my boys from Texas in here. It's 30 foot fall. But. It's 30 foot fall doing. A cover song. Dancing with myself from Billy Idol. I fucking love their version of the song. And it's 30 foot fall doing what they do best. Playing a song and then fucking shredding other bands that they hate, that I hate too. Like no effects. Just take some time out of your day and listen to that cover cover version. Like the last three minutes are just so entertaining. They just start fucking ripping on everybody. Love 30 foot fall. Number 10, I had to get him in here. Dio, Holy Diver. That fucking song, first time I heard it, you know, his vocals just like, you're like, wow. And then you find out he's like five foot three. He's like as tall as my mom and his voice is like as big as a fucking, you know, like a bear. And Vivian Campbell, you know how much I love that solo for Early Diver. But, you know, dun, 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 and I know it's kind of simple, the rhythm and stuff, but it's, it's Dio. It, it just sucks you in. That voice guitar riff, and then Vivian Campbell fucking shreds. Unlike anything he did in Def Leppard. Let's just be honest. Alright. 
Number nine, Mucky Pup, Batman. They have to be in here. Danny Nastasi, my favorite guitarist. Not going to go into that again. I've already talked about that. But that could, oh my God, he's so fucking good live. I posted the videos before. Like he sounds just the same live as he as he does on the recordings. But that, dun 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 Dude can just get after it. Nobody fucking knows about him. But do me a favor and check him out, please. Fucking Shredder. When he wants to be. He doesn't always do souls, but if he wants to, he can. He just focuses on the song, and there's nothing wrong with that. Number eight. You know, Mark Atkins got to be in here. Gutter Mouth Baker's Dozen. You know. Can I go emo and just cry? Or maybe I'll go Skycore and Skank and tell it till I die. How about hardcore? Really hardcore. I fucking hate that metal shit. Super vegans, you all suck, so watch your core, stupid whore. You've heard me sing that song a thousand times, right? We're ripping on all the different, you know, genres and stuff. Well, you know, emo core, screamo core. He even says alba core, which I agree. It's like... How many cores are there now? Fuck. Let's get our shit together. How about how about just writing a fucking song? Quit screaming and crying and bawling. Just try to sing the shit out of tune like everybody else does. Seriously. It's the way it should be. Number seven. This was hard for me, okay? Um, I wanted to pick Run to the Hills, Iron Maiden, and actually had them in, slotted in at number 17, which I could have, technically, but I wanted to get Fred's down in there. And while Run to the Hills was technically the first song that really got me into Iron Maiden, I went crazy because I seen Bruce Dickinson you know, with all the spikes on his arms, you know, the leather wristbands and shit. It was like, fuck yeah, Iron Maiden. I went with Purgatory off Killers because Paul Diano is my favorite vocalist from Iron Maiden. We know this. I'm not going to get into this. But that, when I heard Purgatory, oh my God, like the speed of the guitars, the drums, you know, Clyde Burr, Dave Murray and Adrian Smith just dang, 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 like they always do. But when I when I first heard Run to the Hills, which you know still had the galloping guitar, dun, 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 running through ghost paths and barren waste. What did I just sing there? I don't know what I sang, but anyway, but Purgatory, like dun, 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 bum, bum. Place I have never seen, and it, you know the vocals are really fast, and then the the, the chorus is so catchy. I went with Purgatory, uh, you know. But let's do this, you know. While I'm thinking about it, I didn't really do. How about an honorable mention for Run to the Hills? Okay, let's do that. Yeah, I my list is always wacky, right? I mean, you're used to that by now. We're giving Iron Maiden Run to the Hills an honorable mention right before. Uh, Number 25, Death Left for Photograph, which actually, now that I think about it, maybe Iron Maiden, Run to the Hill should be number 25. But that's besides the point. It's already been done. But, yeah, Purgatory, though, is number seven off of Killers. Paul Diano, the guitars, Steve Harris. I mean, it's Iron Maiden. You know how big of an Iron Maiden fan I am. And remember, these are the essential songs. Maybe they're not the 25 greatest songs ever written. But they're the most essential to me. They're the ones that made me, like I said before, the fucked up individual that I am today. Number six. Gwar. The Salamanizer. Here's a little something from a god to a slave. I never should have been let out the fucking microwave. I'm on this planet. I'm running amok. I should give a shit. But I don't give a fuck, no. Since I was a scum dog, I blew a cum heart. I need a motherfucking suck a dick a lick a lob. 
I could keep going and going. I, when I first heard that, I was like, oh my God, who is this? And the rest is history. It's gore. It's odorous. Rest in peace. You know how I feel about Odor Shirangas. I don't have to go in, into detail about that. You already know. Uh, that's how you kick off Scum Dogs of the Universe 1989. That song changed my life. Number five. I would give you the stars in the sky, but they're too far away. Ding, 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 ding. If you were a hooker, you know. I'd be happy to pay. We're talking community property, Steel Panther. I do not know. I did not listen to that song and not smile just a little bit. You know you could. Some of you don't want to, but you could. That's all I'm saying. Just saying. Yeah, just saying. With no G on there. I want to make sure I sound but cool. But it's just a great palette. It's Steel Panther. You know, they're right up there with the other bands that I love, obviously. Uh, I love that song every time I hear it. And Satchel. Huh? Michael Starr's vocal is amazing, but Satchel, this guitar solo on that. Are we not impressed, as always? Number four. I went with Death to All but metal. That's right. Steel Panther back to back. I mean, I gotta give Trailer Trash credit for this. He's like, you gotta go get this album, Feel the Steel. Fuck the Goo Goo Dolls, they can suck my balls. They look like the dogs that hang out at the mall. Eminem can suck it, so can Dr. Dre. They can suck each other just because they're gay. When I first heard that, I was like, Holy fuck, do I love this band. I'm in. Thank you, Trailer Trash. You know, I, I'm i like a band that really speaks to me. I love it. Like all these bands do, right? And number three, I went with Gore. The Road Behind. Off of America Must Be Destroyed. Their second album, which was, by the way, number two on my top 50 of all time. That album, I just, oh my god, such an amazing album. There's so many songs I could have picked off this one. But I went with Road Behind because of Odorous' vocals. You know, Beefcake sings the chorus. The lyrics are typical core. But the riff is so awesome. The heaviness of the guitar, ball sax, destroyer, as I call it, is ESP destroyer. You know, such an underrated fucking band. Posted this the other day on Facebook. They really are gore. Uh, get past the lyrics and all the crazy shit on, that they do on stage. Realize that they really are good fucking musicians. They ain't no joke, my man. Uh, so yeah, number three, the road behind. Number two. Yeah. The, I'm telling you, I told you the first one's going to surprise you. Number two, Poli. Working class whore. How many times have I talked about this song? Why? Oh, how do you connect with this song so well, Scumalicious? Because I'm a working class whore. Fuck it, man. I'm just a whore, period. Okay? And I, I'm not ashamed to say that. But uh, it is what it is. And by the way, the working class whores are the backbone of this nation. We all know that. Okay? Uh, and it's poorly, you know, off their third album. Um, probably ranking Pulley albums, probably my third favorite album, but it's, it's still Pulley. Fuck. I love everything they do, right? And they're like, yeah, suck that ass. I'm going to suck that Pulley ass. Get all the cock out of that fucking crack. Ass crack. And number one, and the most essential song to the Scumalicious soundtrack. The song that I heard that when I, even when I listen to it today, I'm like, that's the song that started it. That's the song that made me want to go do shit in life that I never really ended up doing. That's why I'm a working class whore. 
Faster Pussycat, Bathroom Wall, off their debut album, That's Right. That's the number one essential song. When you listen to that, song number written on the wall, set for a good time call. I mean, I know when you hear that, you're like, really? That's the number one song, essential song. It's kind of malicious. Remember, this list is not the greatest songs ever recorded, the top 25 most essential songs that molded me into the fucked up individual I am today. That's what this list is about. So when you listen to the lyrics and hear, you know, Timmy Downs vocals and that, that song, then it makes sense. You're like, oh, okay. Number, get a chick's number off the bathroom wall, call it at random. Who gives a fuck? Text her late at night. Never met her. Go meet her at a strange motel in a bad neighborhood after you're strung out on coke. We get it. I knew you would. But there you go. And you know what? That was fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. But, again, kind of random, I know. But let's remember, honorable mention, Iron Maiden Run to the Hills. I, I do need to put that in there. I feel bad for not putting that so in there. But Purgatory does outshine Run to the Hills in my book. There you go. There you have it. A little Scum Malicious on a Saturday for you. The ultimate Scum Malicious soundtrack, we'll call it. And uh, just, you know what? Keep drinking, doing whatever you're doing today. Fuck this weather. Stay inside. Do your cocaine. Get on the internet. Look up some porn. You know, get get into your phone and check out some of the old phone numbers. Like, well, who's this? And just text it and see what, see what happens. Say, hey, I'm horny, and then they uh, text back. Oh, really, motherfucker? Oh, <laughs> delete, block, wrong number. You know what I'm saying. All right, you know how I do this. Take it easy, and if it's easy, take it twice. I'm out.